Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about sorting your data with the order by in your SQL queries. Oftentimes we need to take the data that we have in our tables or in our queries and we need to sort them either alphabetically or numerically. So what we can do is we can take a table such as this one that has first name, age, and salary. And let's say that we wanted to sort according to the first name alphabetically. Well, that would move all of the Joes up top and all of the Steves at the bottom and put Mary somewhere in the middle. So we would have Joe, 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 Mary, Steve, and Steve. So we've uh, changed the sorting alphabetically on here. But something else that you may have noticed is if we look at the age column, in addition to sorting by first name, we've done this subsorting according to age. So now all the Joes are uh, sorted according to their age from youngest to oldest, and the same with the Steves. Let's see how we can add sorting to our queries, not just for a single column, but sometimes we need to do it for multiple columns, just like this. Some of you may have noticed that when we were entering in these values for our people, we were kind of doing a happy little accident in that we were entering in each one of these users according to their last name in alphabetical order. So Steve Bishop comes first before Shane Doe, then Denise Johnson, then Joyce Reynolds, then John Smith. So we have BDJRS, which happens to be alphabetically ordered. And that's nice, but when we start adding more and more users, we're probably not going to maintain that set of rigidity, right? We're not going to be able to know who's going to be joining up in this people table. Uh, we're going to be adding them afterwards, and it's probably going to destroy this last name order. So we need to do something in a query that allows us to organize our results in this same alphabetical order. So I'm going to go to this query one, which right now is doing an aggregate query. So we're going to need to change some things to get rid of the aggregation. I'm just going to go into the design view here, and then I'm going to go to the design tab and unselect the totals. That gets rid of the aggregate functions that we were doing here. But we also need to get rid of the alias names that we have in here. So we have people type count. Let's get rid of that. It should just say type name. And then over here for average salary, let's get rid of that. And it just should be salary because that's the field name for the column that we actually want. Now we also end up having two type name columns. So let's go ahead and get rid of one of those because we don't want to have duplicate values. And if we run this, we're just going to see, okay, customer, 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 employee. Uh, and we're seeing only four records here because our query currently, if we look at the join properties between these two tables, it's set to an uh, inner join where we're only including rows where the join fields of both tables are equal. And in the one record for me, the person type is set to three. But if we look at people types, it's there is no ID of three. So that's the reason why I am not showing up. My, my records, my values are not actually showing up in the query results because of this inner join. So just to kind of fix that, I'm going to change person type on me from three to four. And then once I save that, and we go into our query, and if we just rerun it by going to the uh, datasheet view, now we have an extra record which is now showing me as a vendor with a salary of 50,000. All right, so this is great. Now I'm gonna go back into the design view, and I'm gonna add some of these columns from our people table back in. So I'm gonna do first name and last name. We'll do date of birth. We'll do salary. And yeah, we'll leave type name and actually, Let's get rid of that salary since we already had it. So we'll just do first name, last name, date of birth, type name, and salary. And if we run this, okay, so there's our data set, right? This is the combination of people and people types as essentially one record set, as one set of values, uh, one, one set of returned values, right? Okay, so what I want to do is I want to reverse with the order that these users show up or these people show up. So John Smith should be first, then Joyce, then Denise, then Shane, then me. And so what I need to do is I need to reorder these records according to last name in descending order. By default, they're in ascending order because that's how they are in the table. So what I need to do is I'm going to go into the design view 
And I'm going to go to this last name column, and there's this sort row that has a drop down. If I click on this underneath last name, I can change this to descending. And so somebody with the last name with a letter of the alphabet that comes later in the alphabet, they should show up first in the record sets, in the results. So if we run this, now we've completely reversed the direction. So now John Smith, then Joyce Reynolds, Denise Johnson, Shane Doe, and then finally me. So we flipped the order that the records appear simply by reordering according to last name. We've sorted the last name in descending order. That's pretty cool. Um, what, what are some of the other things that we can do? So we've done it alphabetically, but we also have a date type here and a salary, which is really just a number. So can we sort according to dates and numbers? Well, sure, we can certainly do that. So we go back into the design view. Let's change our last name to not sorted. And we'll change date of birth to descending. Okay, so we'll do date of birth descending. And if we run this, we get date of birth. And the person who has the date, the highest numbered date, which would really be the date closest to today's date, they're showing up as the first record. So we go from youngest person to oldest person when we do a date in a descending order for the date of birth. We can flip that around if we go into the design view and we change it from date of birth descending to date of birth ascending. And now we're gonna get the oldest person first because their date comes first on the calendar. Okay, that's great. Now let's try it with salary. So I'm gonna go back over to design view. Let's go ahead and drop the date of birth and we're gonna change salary to ascending. So the person who has the lowest income is going to show up first. All right, so this is all fine and good. We can do some pretty fairly straightforward sorting and ordering of our data. But let's take a look at the salaries that we have here for Joyce and for me. Notice that they are the same. So how do we get to this determination that Joyce shows up before I do? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can figure out some other value, some other way to do the sorting. So let's say rather than um, just kind of however the results appear is just kind of how they appear, I want to have a little bit more granularity. I want to make sure that since I have a date, I'm just one day younger than Joyce, I'm going to say I want to sort according to salary. And then if there's a tie here between the salary, I want you to show me the youngest person first. So that would put me above Joyce. How can we do that? So if I go into my query and I go to the design view and I change date of birth to be, uh, since youngest would be descending, so the youngest person should show on top. I'm going to do descending. Let's run this. And okay, I'm above Joyce, but now our salary order is all out of whack. Hmm. What happened here? Well, the problem is if we look at in the design view, since salary is a column that appears from left to right later, that means that the first the, the first column that's going to be getting organized by or ordered by will be date of birth. So this ordering trumps whatever salary ordering we had. And if we wanna fix that, we can simply take this salary column and move it in front of date of birth. And now we're back to where we want it, right? So salary is in the ascending order. And look, date of birth has put me above Joyce. That's great, right? So we finally figured out how to get our, uh, our records exactly the way that we want them. However, what if this salary column, I don't like it where it's at. I want it over here to the right. I want it after the type name where it originally was before. I don't want it to appear here in this uh, list of values. I want it to appear last. So there's a bit of a problem here because we have kind of a conflict since in order for the sort orders to take precedence for my salary, I have to put it in front of date of birth, but that changes the rows or the columns that appear in my results. I need to do something else. I'm going to take this salary column and I'm going to add it once again to the end here where I want it to be after type name. And what I can do is down here in the show row, there's check marks for each one of the rows that are appearing 
in the results, in my select essentially. And if I want to sort according to salary first, but I don't want it to appear in my result set before date of birth, I can simply uncheck it. So the ascending order, the sort order will take precedence over date of birth, but it won't appear in my results until over here where that row shows up again. So let's go ahead and, or I should say that column shows up again. So when we run it, now our salary is in the right place. Our, our uh, salary is still, notice that it is sorted appropriately, 40, 50, 50, 75, 80. So it is in ascending order the way I want it to. And then secondarily to that, since both I and Joyce have the same salary, but I'm a little younger than Joyce, I am showing up now slightly ahead. So that is what you can do in the design view, right? So we can go and we can kind of move things around here for the columns that appear. You can select which ones show up. And if one of those columns is really supposed to help with the sorting, but you don't want it to appear until later on, you can simply unselect the show checkbox so that it will sort according to that column first, but it won't appear in the result set until later on. Now, I just want to show you the SQL that's happening in the background. So I'm going to right click and go to SQL view. And you'll notice that there's been this addition of order by to our SQL query. And our select statement up here shows salary at the very end. So salary is now at the end. However, our order by shows salary as the first column to order by. Also, you'll notice with the people.dob, the date of birth, there's this DESC, which stands for descending. So if we look at the design view again, notice that we were saying for date of birth, we want it in descending order. And that's how uh, in the SQL query, in the actual SQL view, that's how we're telling our SQL engine to change the direction, to reverse the direction to descending order on this particular column as we just simply add DESC. Now, if we want it to be ascending, like we have for salary, we could just simply drop the DESC because by default, anytime that you add it to the order by, it will be in ascending order. So that's just the default. If you want to change that, you have to add the DESC. So I can do that to salary here and I can say DESC for salary, but people date of birth should be in ascending. And then what's going to happen is essentially the complete reversal of what we were doing before. So now we have salary, 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 salary. We go uh, from largest to lowest, which is the exact opposite order because we changed it from ascending to descending. And now also we flipped around date of birth to be, uh, to, to be ascending. So that's why now Joyce, who is slightly older by one day, shows up ahead of me. So we were able to flip both of those around by flipping in our SQL uh, the descending, we moved it from out of date of birth over here to salary, and that basically swapped both of those order by columns to be the reversals. And we just would need to do that if we wanted to completely reverse the direction that our results appear uh, is we're sorting by those two columns. So hopefully you guys can understand how this order by clause really, really helps to sort out your data and kind of give you that look and feel uh, of what you might want and a lot of people would just go straight into the table data and just start going, oh, I want to do this uh, sort according to A to Z and then sort according to Z to A, right? And that's nice and easy and it's simple to do. But what you're going to find out is as you're working with Access Databases, you don't always want your users to be able to go directly into the tables and start fiddling around with the data. That's really, really not what we want to do. And we're going to be tackling that later on in this series when we're going to talk about forms and stuff like that. Queries is where it's actually at. Queries is where you take the data and you organize it, you sort it, you select the columns that you want, how you want to organize the data, show it, make it appear, group it, do aggregate data. Uh, you know, that's what the queries are for. They really help you figure out the data and extract the data out of the tables in the order that you want it. And you should be doing that kind of, kind of evaluation in queries, not in the tables directly. And I hope that you guys are starting to see the queries are a very, very powerful way to do this and much, much better than trying to go into the tables and just kind of you know, clicking on things and you might accidentally fat finger or change something here without meaning to. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and let me know that you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.
I'd like to thank all of the members who've signed up recently, HRU Bricks, Jim Griggs, Samuel Niketsia Tabiri, Four Technical, Kanan Krishnan, uh, Rishi, SAA Consulting, Miss Killam Softly, or Mrs. Killam Softly, and Olubayu Olasakin. Thank you guys for being members. I really appreciate it. If you too want to have your name mentioned at the end of these recordings, all you have to do is sign up to be a member at just $5 a month. You also get 10% off currently in our uh, Teespring store. So if you want to buy some swag, some merchandise, you can go ahead and do that at 10% off just by being a member. Uh, also, you get a direct communication with me. There's a form that you can fill out to ask me questions directly. So that's uh, an awesome benefit I think a lot of members like to take advantage of. So hopefully, you guys, if you want to join up and be members, I would really, really appreciate it. Your dollars definitely help to make this channel grow. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.